Epithelium, Wikipedia Audio Epithelium is one of the four basic types of animal tissue, along with connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. Epithelial tissues line the outer surfaces of organs and blood vessels throughout the body, as well as the inner surfaces of cavities in many internal organs. An example is the epidermis, the outermost layer of the skin. There are three principal shapes of epithelial cell, squamous, columnar, and cuboidal. These can be arranged in a single layer of cells as simple epithelium, either squamous, columnar, cuboidal, pseudostratified columnar or in layers of two or more cells deep as stratified, either squamous, columnar or cuboidal. All glands are made up of epithelial cells. Functions of epithelial cells include secretion, selective absorption, protection, transcellular transport, and sensing. Epithelial layers contain no blood vessels, so they must receive nourishment via diffusion of substances from the underlying connective tissue, through the basement membrane. Cell junctions are well employed in epithelial tissues. Classification in general, epithelial tissues are classified by the number of their layers and by the shape and function of the cells. The three principal shapes associated with epithelial cells are squamous, cuboidal and columnar. Squamous epithelium has cells that are wider than their height, cuboidal epithelium has cells whose height and width are approximately the same. Columnar epithelium has cells taller than they are wide. By layer, epithelium is classed as either simple epithelium, only one cell thick or stratified epithelium as stratified squamous epithelium, stratified cuboidal epithelium, and stratified columnar epithelium that are two or more cells thick, and both types of layering can be made up of any of the cell shapes. However, when taller simple columnar epithelial cells are viewed in cross-section showing several nuclei appearing at different heights, they can be confused with stratified epithelia. This kind of epithelium is therefore described as pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Transitional epithelium has cells that can change from squamous to cuboidal, depending on the amount of tension on the epithelium. Simple epithelium is a single layer of cells with every cell in direct contact with the basement membrane that separates it from the underlying connective tissue. In general, it is found where absorption and filtration occur. The thinness of the epithelial barrier facilitates these processes. In general, simple epithelial tissues are classified by the shape of their cells. The four major classes of simple epithelium are, simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, pseudostratified. Stratified epithelium differs from simple epithelium in that it is multilayered. It is therefore found where body linings have to withstand mechanical or chemical insults such that layers can be abraded and lost without exposing subepithelial layers. Cells flatten as the layers become more apical, though in their most basal layers the cells can be squamous, cuboidal or columnar. From ectoderm, from endoderm, from mesoderm. Stratified epithelia can have the following specializations. The basic cell types are squamous, cuboidal, and columnar classed by their shape. Endocrine glands secrete their product into the extracellular space where it is rapidly taken up by the circulatory system, exocrine glands secrete their products into a duct that then delivers the product to the lumen of an organ or onto the free surface of the epithelium. Simple Epithelium Cells of epithelial tissue are tightly packed and form a continuous sheet. They have almost no intercellular spaces. 
All epithelia is usually separated from underlying tissues by an extracellular fibrous basement membrane. The lining of the mouth, lung alveoli, and kidney tubules all are made of epithelial tissue. The lining of the blood and lymphatic vessels are of a specialized form of epithelium called endothelium. Epithelium lines both the outside and the inside cavities and lumina of bodies. The outermost layer of human skin is composed of dead stratified squamous, keratinized epithelial cells. Tissues that line the inside of the mouth, the esophagus, the vagina, and part of the rectum are composed of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Other surfaces that separate body cavities from the outside environment are lined by simple squamous, columnar, or pseudostratified epithelial cells. Other epithelial cells line the insides of the lungs, the gastrointestinal tract, the reproductive and urinary tracts, and make up the exocrine and endocrine glands. The outer surface of the cornea is covered with fast growing easily regenerated epithelial cells. A specialized form of epithelium endothelium forms the inner lining of blood vessels in the heart, and is known as vascular endothelium, and lining lymphatic vessels as lymphatic endothelium. Another type, mesothelium, forms the walls of the pericardium, pleury, and peritoneum. In arthropods, the integument, or external skin, consists of a single layer of epithelial ectoderm from which arises the cuticle, an outer covering of chitin the rigidity of which varies as per its chemical composition. Epithelial tissue rests on a basement membrane, which acts as a scaffolding on which epithelium can grow and regenerate after injuries. Epithelial tissue has a nerve supply but no blood supply and must be nourished by substances diffusing from the blood vessels in the underlying tissue. The basement membrane acts as a selectively permeable membrane that determines which substances will be able to enter the epithelium. Cell junctions are especially abundant in epithelial tissues. They consist of protein complexes and provide contact between neighboring cells between a cell and the extracellular matrix, or they build up the paracellular barrier of epithelia and control the paracellular transport. Cell junctions are the contact points between plasma membrane and tissue cells. There are mainly five different types of cell junctions, tight junctions, adherens junctions, desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, and gap junctions. Tight junctions are a pair of transmembrane protein fused on outer plasma membrane. Adherens junctions are a plaque which attaches both cells' microfilaments. Desmosomes attach to the microfilaments of cytoskeleton made up of keratin protein. Hemidesmosomes resemble desmosomes on a section. They are made up of the INTE grin instead of cadherin. They attach the epithelial cell to the basement membrane. Gap junctions connect the cytoplasm of two cells and are made up of proteins called connexins. Stratified epithelium Cell types Epithelial tissues are derived from all of the embryological germ layers. Microanatomy Web Atlas Structure Location Basement membrane Cell junctions Development However, it is important to note that pathologists do not consider endothelium and mesothelium to be true epithelium. This is because such tissues present very different pathology. For that reason, Pathologists label cancers in endothelium and mesothelium sarcomas, whereas true epithelial cancers are called carcinomas. Also, the filaments that support these mesoderm-derived tissues are very distinct. Outside of the field of pathology, it is, 
in general, accepted that the epithelium arises from all three germ layers. Epithelial tissues have as their primary functions. Glandular tissue is the type of epithelium that forms the glands from the enfolding of epithelium and subsequent growth in the underlying connective tissue. There are two major classifications of glands, endocrine glands and exocrine glands. Functions Some epithelial cells are ciliated, especially in respiratory epithelium, and they commonly exist as a sheet of polarized cells forming a tube or tubule with cilia projecting into the lumen. Primary cilia on epithelial cells provide chemosensation, thermoception, and mechanosensation of the extracellular environment by playing a sensory role mediating specific signaling cues, including soluble factors in the external cell environment, a secretory role in which a soluble protein is released to have an effect downstream of the fluid flow, and mediation of fluid flow if the cilia are modal. The slide shows at an epithelial cell infected by chlamydia pneumonia, their inclusion bodies shown at, an uninfected cell shown at and showing the difference between an infected cell nucleus and an uninfected cell nucleus. Epithelium grown in culture can be identified by examining its morphological characteristics. Epithelial cells tend to cluster together, and have a characteristic tight pavement-like appearance. But this is not always the case, such as when the cells are derived from a tumor. In these cases, it is often necessary to use certain biochemical markers to make a positive identification. The intermediate filament proteins in the cytokeratin group are almost exclusively found in epithelial cells, and so are often used for this purpose. Carcinomas develop in epithelial tissues. Sarcomas develop in connective tissue. When epithelial cells or tissues are damaged from cystic fibrosis, sweat glands are also damaged causing a frosty coating of the skin. The word epithelium uses the Greek roots pi, on or upon, and theta eta lambda, nipple. Epithelium is so called because the name was originally used to describe the translucent covering of small nipples of tissue on the lip. The word has both mass and count senses, the plural form is epithelia. Squamous epithelium 100x Glandular tissue Human cheek cells 500x Histology of female urethra showing transitional epithelium Sensing the extracellular environment Histology of sweat gland showing stratified cuboidal epithelium 1. Histology at KUMC Epithel Epith 0. 2. Simple squamous epithelium of the glomerulus 2. Diagrams of simple squamous epithelium 3. Histology at KUMC Epithel Epith 12. Stratified squamous epithelium of the vagina 4. Histology at KUMC Epithel Epith 14. Stratified squamous epithelium of the skin 5. Histology at KUMC Epithel Epith 15. Stratified squamous epithelium Epithelium of the skin 6 Stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus Clinical significance Etymology and pronunciation Bibliography